Hey everybody, Tanya back from Shooting Star SVG, and tonight we are going to talk about how to create an old vintage, vintage I can speak, looking paper utilizing Photopea, a free online Photoshop esque program. Um, this is kind of like something that you could use as a background in images or to make some old school paper like you could put some flowers on here or whatever or you could use this as a texture overlay to kind of um, make some photos look a little old-timey and I'll show you what some of those look like at the end of this video but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through how to create this or something similar because you're not going to get the same effect um, these darker edges are created with the burn tool, but we're, we'll get into that in just a few minutes. So go ahead and go to Photo P. And you can see that's where I was working earlier. You're going to want to open up a new document. Now, um, I'm going to be using this for digital paper. So I'll just, I'll close out of this and I'll show you what my dimensions were. So you just go to File New and you set your DPI to 300 if people are going to be printing it. If it's just going to be for like web use or whatever, you can use 72. That doesn't make a difference. And then just make your width and height 3600 by 3600 pixels and click on create. The first thing that you're going to do is create a color fill layer. So you go down to new adjustment layer and click on color fill. And you're going to try and get like a brownish color. So if you set your red to 211, your green to 150, and your blue to 178, set it at a height of about 32, you will get this brownish color. And if you want something a little bit darker, you can go ahead and do that. It's really just personal preference here, okay? So once you get it where you want it, go ahead and click OK. And then the next thing that you're going to do is create a new layer. And you're going to go to Filter, Render, and Clouds. And that's probably going to take a second because I have a lot of stuff open on my computer right now. I probably would have should have closed some stuff out. So it's going to look something like this. And then the next thing you're going to do is go to Filter, and you're going to go to Filter Gallery. And here we are going to apply something called a spatter. Okay, so you come over here to this drop down and click on the spatter. And you are just going to max your settings out here. So you're going to bring that spray radius up to 25. And you're going to bring your smoothness up to 15. And that should max you out. Go ahead and click OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change the blending mode of this layer. So make sure you have your clouds layer selected. And go to overlay. And then you're going to drop your opacity down to about 10%, um, 20%, I'm sorry. And you'll see that kind of blend in better if it ever loads. There we go. Okay. So the next thing that you're going to do <clears throat> is create another new layer. And you are going to go through the same process where you go to filter, render, and clouds. Now this is interesting because Photoshop has, <coughs> excuse me, an artistic filter called cutout. In this case for Photopea, we do not have that option. So we're going to go to image and we're going to go to vectorize bitmap. Now this is going to take a few minutes because it's going to show you a preview here on the right hand side. But you're going to drop your colors down to four. And it's going to take a second to load for me. So just bear with me as that process is through. So you're going to change this 20 
to 4. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to segment everything out. And you're going to get like hundreds of paths. So it's a little bit of a pain in the butt compared to Photoshop. But it serves the same purpose. Go ahead and click OK. So you'll see that this layer has broken up everything here into different paths. But don't worry about that because we're going to merge everything in a few minutes. You want to make sure that you change this layer um, to an overlay again. When you first do that, it's going to look really wonky, right? Drop that opacity down again. Okay, I do, I do about 12%. And you can adjust it based off what you're looking for. Okay. 10% might be a little bit better. It really just depends. Try to keep it between 10 and 15% opacity. Okay. And then that will be good. And then what you're going to do is collapse this layer. And then you're going to... I'm actually going to get rid of this background layer because I don't freaking need it. And then what you're going to do is you're actually going to merge... Um, all of your layers. So select your layers and click on merge layers. Do 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 do. And it's probably going to take a few minutes only because the third layer that we just created has so many paths. So you have to be a little bit patient depending on how fast your computer is. And mine's starting to get a little sluggish, so may need time for an upgrade. So if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe because once I hit a certain level, I can start making some money towards that new computer, right? <laughs> oh, come on. This is taking so long. I'm sorry. Oh, come on. Any day. Great. Of course it would do that in the middle of my video. Come on. There we go. I was like, this is going to drop out on me and I'll be so upset. Okay, so now that we have this, you can see that it doesn't really look quite exactly like what I just created. Um, the other one seems to be a little bit lighter, but this one is a little bit lighter. But that's okay, we're going to roll with it. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to select the burn tool. And this is hidden, so normally what this looks like is it looks like the dodge tool right here. You're just gonna right click on this and click on burn. You want kind of a soft brush. I mean, it by default it selects this 24 point hard brush, right? Um, but you, this is just, it's too much. So you wanna bring that hardness down, okay? And you're gonna bring your size up. And once you are satisfied, Another important part, make sure midtones is selected and exposure is 50%. Once you start clicking on this, you'll see the edges start to darken up. And you can just play around with that until you get it how you like it. And you can change the size, you know, in the softness if you're looking for. A little bit of like darker splotches somewhere or you want like you know some just whatever you want so you just play around with it until you get it how you want it and just it creates like this old timey feel okay so and we're not done yet we're close we're close um this is the final touches so this actually looks pretty good it doesn't look like this but we'll compare and contrast when i'm when i'm done right so you're gonna go ahead and create an, another new layer and fun fact, if you hold down control and hit backspace, it will fill your layer with white. That's what we want to do. Okay, so go ahead and hit control backspace on your computer. <clears throat> I didn't mean to delete it. I got excited about that keyboard shortcut. And then you're going to go to filter, noise, add noise. And you're going to make sure monochromatic is checked. That if, if it doesn't, then you'll have colorful noise. Make sure, um, I don't know how to pronounce this word, I guess it's Gaussian. Gaussian. Make sure that's checked. <laughs> and then go up to about 120. You just want to make sure that there's like a lot of noise, okay? 
and then click on OK. And then you're going to change this to an overlay. OK. And then again, you're going to change your opacity. And I drop mine down to usually to about 10%. And it'll add like this texture effect to the, the paper that looks really, really cool. And that's it. You're done. Uh, you can you can merge this layer down if that's what you want to do, um, just to be done with it, I guess. Um, and then you just want to go to, and I'm gonna I'm gonna save this as old paper too. You just click on File, Export as JPEG, and you'll see your width dimensions are there. Make sure your quality is set to 100%, and then click on Save. And I'm going to go ahead and open this up. So you can see that I have this one. And I double clicked on it. And this one. So they're different. They both look really cool. Um, you can see that every time you do this, it's going to have different effects because the program is going to render things differently every time that you apply a filter. And it also is very dependent on what background color you use. So in this case, I used a little bit of a darker brown. And in the first one, I used a much lighter beige color for the background. So you can play around with the different color types depending on what you're looking to get. And I'd be really interested to see what y'all have done with this. Um, and I will um, just, I'm going to pause the video for a second so I can open up some of the things that um, I've done with these textures. So just bear with me while I get that. Okay, so just to show you what you can do with this, if you go to Edit, Define New, and Pattern, it will create a pattern um, <clears throat> for your paper. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like over a photo. I have my two crazy children here, and I created a pattern fill layer for the photo. So you can just go down to here and click on New Adjustment Layer and click on Pattern Fill. Um, and then click on the drop down here. <clears throat> and you can change this so that you just see a, li a list. Um, and Old Paper 2 is right here. So you click on that. And then you're just going to change this to Overlay. And you'll see that old time paper effect get applied to your photographs. It just gives it kind of like this old timey feel, which is really cool, right? Um, the other thing that you can do is take elements and add them to the paper. So I just kind of winged it with this clip art that I got from Design Bundles. And I added these onto the paper and just kind of placed them in such a way that, um, you know, I changed the colors. These are very bright lilac colored um, flowers. And it just creates like this really cool effect. So I just wanted to show you a couple ways that you can mess around with these papers and really get a cool effect. So it's like before and after, you know, the same paper just with added effects onto it. So I just wanted to show you guys that. And this video is a little bit longer than I like, but um, I, the process is a little bit tedious. But once you get the hang of it, um, it can go pretty quick. So. I hope you all got something out of this. Please go ahead and click like and subscribe below if you haven't done that already. And let me know if there's something that you'd like to see, something more um, that I can show you guys because I really love being able to teach and provide new techniques for people to utilize with their design. So I hope everybody has a great night and is surviving the coronavirus pandemic. I'll talk to you all later.